Hello, happy 2022. First of all, thank you so much, IoT Central, to have me here. My name is Ricardo Bernalo, and I'm a Senior Vice President and Head of Talent IoT Platforms. On today's webinar, I will also have Matthew Kiever, our Field Application Engineer, that we're, is going to do a live demo on our platforms. But before I start talking about the technology and showing how we are supporting our customers in terms of bringing IoT to the reality of the shop floor, I would like to share with you that today we are going to give 10 free licenses of DeviceWise for the webinars attendees. So stay until the end of this webinar and you have the chance to get a thousand dollars license for you completely free of cost. And let me start with a quick uh, company overview. Some of you are already very familiar with Telit. Telit's a global company. We are around for quite some time. And the only thing that we do is IoT. We currently connect a machine, a sensor, every second. We are talking about 30 to 40 million machines and sensors connected every year. This makes Telit as one of the largest pure IoT companies in the world. Our software platform comes from an acquisition. In 2013, Telit acquired a spin-off of IBM Automation Group, a company called ILS Technology. And with this, we bring to Telit product portfolio, device-wise and secure-wise platforms. This product started its development in 1986 inside IBM as a product called PlantWorks. And we kept investing and evolving on the platform to the point that it is today. DeviceWise is currently used in many different sectors, from automotive to pharmaceutical, food and beverage, oil and gas, heavy machinery, connected machines, and more. I always like to give the example of automotive, automotive space because of the complexity of the environment. We know that in large automotive companies, you have very diverse types of equipment. Time matters a lot. These companies, they can produce basically a car every minute or even faster. So latency becomes critical there. And all the complexity also from OT and IT integration. And in this space, Talit is a leader by far, where seven out of the 10 largest car makers in the world, they use our platform on the shop floor in order to guarantee a better manufacturing process. So what exactly does it look like to transform a non-IoT factory into an IoT factory? Actually, if you look at the picture, if you look at the ecosystem of this factory, probably it will look just like the same and should be like that because no factory will simply replace the equipment in order to be IoT compliant. Actually, IoT exists to make the existing factories, the existing machines and the existing IT systems to work better together. But then when you start looking in details, what you're going to see in all these different types of manufacturing environments is a very complex type of footprint. Just here on this picture, I see, for example, a Rocco controller up there in the smart crane. I see a machine here running a Siemens PLC, an 840D CNC, AGV moving part around, a robot here, and, send, and the necessity of guarantee the safety and the performance of the people running on the shop floor. On top of that, the companies, they run different types of IT systems from different vendors, such as the ERP from SAP, the databases from Oracle, different types of SCADA and MES systems, and cognitive cloud computing. How can we do these things to work better together to integrate all the different machines and all the different IT systems with a layer of intelligence? Basically, this is what we do. So if you think about device-wise, device-wise is this is smart arrow connecting all different types of machines to each other and to, its, and to different IT systems, making a more uh, complete and automated environment. Telet has been recognized as a leader in this space. We won over the years several awards as the best industrial IoT product and ABI research classifies Telet as a leader in smart manufacturing platforms. I like the way that they describe us saying that compared to Kepper, 
DeviceWise has the advantage in lower latencies. Compared to Foghorn Systems, DeviceWise has advanced IT-OT integration capabilities. Compared to homegrown data extraction and edge intelligence solutions provided by industrial automation companies, DeviceWise has more flexibility and more advanced software. So what is DeviceWise and in what market is, markets and industries uh, we, uh, we are in? DeviceWise is a software. This software can be installed in any type of environment. We focused in industrial solutions and we divide industrial solutions in two big groups, one that we call connected factories and one that we call connected machines. For connected factories, think for example as Ford or Coca-Cola uh, as examples of use cases where we have device-wise installed at the edge in any type of server. It could be a Windows machine, a Linux server, a big mainframe running a, uh, AIX, a small Raspberry Pi. When you install DeviceWise, DeviceWise comes with hundreds of drivers. Now collecting data from any industrial device is simpler than installing a printer at your computer. You just pick one of the hundreds of drivers that you have available. Siemens PLCs, Fanuc uh, robots, Tor guns, leak testers, sensors, everything becomes available for you in a click of a button. You install, you appoint to IP address, and now all the tag tree gets auto-enumerated for you to read and write data from all these machines without writing a single line of code. Do you need to transform this data? You can use the edge logic embedded on device-wise, avoiding the necessity of writing a single line of code. So I can get raw data, and transform this data into the format that I need to ingest, for example, into a database or even do more advanced solutions such as opening a ticket in a ticketing system. Do you want to take the data and calculate a KPI? DeviceWise is perfect for that. I can take all the machine data and now calculate important performance KPIs such as OE inside the system. And I can use DeviceWise View to display it. DeviceWise View is a fully SCADA and HMI platform embedded in DeviceWise. So I can do screens for operators and dashboard for managers without writing a single line of code. Think this almost like a PowerPoint for machines that you simply drag and drop widgets, right click, appoint to the variable that you want, and now you have live data coming to you from your system. If you want this to be bidirectional, DeviceWise View also can be used like this. Use any interaction widget, such as buttons or text box, and then you can ingest data from the shop floor into your system, making things much more complete. So now I can move data from my machines to my IT systems, such as MES, ERP databases. From my IT systems, taking actions into the machines, using all the front end with DeviceWise View. And if you are using cloud solutions like AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platforms, and more, DeviceWise also can provide a complete bidirectional connectivity to the clouds. But there are many customers that are using DeviceWise today that they are not manufacturing companies, but they are OEMs, they are machine builders, and they are producing industrial equipment and shipping to their customers. In this case, these customers typically use device-wise loaded in 4G or 5G gateways. These gateways can run all the functionalities of device-wise. You can collect all this data on the edge. You can, for example, using device-wise view, replace the necessity of having an HMI system, saving you five to ten thousand dollars per machine using a simple tablet to visualize and control all your machine and much more important than that use the full infrastructure with device wise cloud so you can have a digital twin out of the box showing the performance of all your machines have a dashboard doing your monitoring of all these machines. And if you have a problem, you can use our secure remote access to access this gateway and using a layer two tunnel to access the machine, pro providing you the ability of doing remote maintenance on these machines without the necessity of jumping to an airplane and being on site uh, for that. So 
the way that we position the Viceways is a full integra integrated platform from the edge to the cloud with all the, uh, the, the pillars for you to build your complete application with the drivers for data collection, the edge logic, the ITOT integration, the visualization, cloud connectors, remote access, device management, and more. This makes the platform available to provide you the full necessity of commonality on industrial environments. So it doesn't matter what type of controllers you have, of machines you have, it doesn't matter what type of database, relational or non-relational database, or enterprise systems you're using. We can make all your machines from all the different vendors to talk to all your different IT systems. At the moment that you create an application, you can clone it, you can copy and paste this project and now deploy line by line, project by project, extremely fast. And as we provide a fully vertically integrated platform, it creates the most cost-effective solution in the industry, avoiding the necessity of custom code and different software stacks. But let's say that customers are not using device-wise. How do you compare device-wise with other offers in the market? On the data collection, yeah, there are a couple of platforms there. Kepper is a well-known platform. You can get some drivers. They are not written bare to the metal as device-wise is. So the latency of device-wise is much lower than a Kepper server, but yes, you still can use it to collect some data. Now imagine that you want to monitor a certain tag and create an alarm if a certain variable, let's say the temperature is going higher, or you want to monitor what is the performance of this machine. You can't do this with Kepper. What you need to do is you need to invest in engineering, you need to have a team of engineers to create some logic. Maybe you will integrate this with Node-RED and now you can start to automate decisions based on the variables you have. And let's say now that the IT manager say, I want to push this data to my SQL database and I want to push this data to my SAP to open tickets through BAPIS. Good luck with that. Now you need to hire probably three or four more people. You need to create a custom code here with all the risks that it involves. And then your CIO say, I want to have a digital twin. I want to have a big control room that I can see all the machines of my factory and how they are performing. With device-wise, you don't need to write a single line of code. In very few days of a project, you can create this complete solution and display to your CIO. Without device-wise, now you need to hire more people, you need to buy more softwares like Ignition, for example, uh, for you to have similar capabilities. And if the company wants to have, for example, a data lake in the cloud, device-wise has all the cloud connectors to do it out of the box. While without device-wise, probably you need to hire more three, four engineers and now you have a Frankenstein and millions of dollars already invested with different layers of solutions. Do you want to have a remote, secure remote access? In device-wise, this is done. Without device-wise, you need to go to the market, find another hardware and software provider, and now we start to interface with this, adding more and more custom code here, trying to band-aid softwares and hardwares together. Now that you have hundreds of devices in the field, you need to do device management. With device-wise, all the device management functionalities are available for you, while without device-wise, you need more custom code for this. So it is a complete platform guaranteeing a commonality between all the different machines and IT systems, the ability of cloning it, and because of this vertically integrated solution, this is by far the most cost-effective solution in the industry. Again, stay till the end so you can uh, run here for the free device-wise licenses at the end of this webinar. And now I would like to invite Matthew Kiever to talk a little bit about the live demo that he will do it here. And he's promising us that he's gonna create in 30 minutes a full IoT application without writing a single line of code. Matthew, please go ahead. 
Thank you, Ricardo. For what you guys are going to see right now in a moment, I'm going to bring up my screen and show you a live demo of how we can connect to multiple different devices using DeviceWise without the need of custom code, without the need to make any um, custom environment, using the commonality aspects of DeviceWise. I'm going to be able to connect natively using native drivers and APIs, connect into a Rockwell PLC, a Siemens PLC, I'm going to take the data from there that's going to be simulating a part production and gatekeeping on a on a conveyor belt using that information to then calculate OEE and then produce that information right into a live dashboard that you can then use on your desktop or your mobile device without needing a single line of code. What you're looking at here is the DeviceWise Workbench. The DeviceWise Workbench is the main tool you use to interface with DeviceWise, either on the same machine, on-premise within a network, or to connecting to remote installations anywhere around the world. Let me show you how to get started with DeviceWise. Let's start off with connecting to two different PLCs. The first PLC is going to be a Rockwell Micro 820. This is going to be the PLC that's going to control the gates on the conveyor belt um, for opening or closing for, for the good part feed or the bad part feed. All we need to do is select the product type, put in the IP address, and then we're good to go. The next one we're going to connect to is a Siemens S7-1200. This is going to be the PLC that's going to read the data coming out of the machine and telling us if it's going to be a good part or a bad part so we know which chute on the Rockwell to put it on. Again, all we need to do is put in an IP address. If we wanted to, though, we could do a lot of different settings changes for this PLC. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and set up our global variable device. Our global variable device is going to hold what we need for data for OEE calculations. We'll first start off by creating a variable for ideal cycle time that we'll use in OE calculations in a minute. First off, we'll go ahead and type a name, and then we'll set this type to uint8. Followed by the next variable will be plan production time. Then we'll do run time. total count, which will keep track of how many parts we produce completely. Good count will keep track of how many good parts we produce. Bad count will keep track of how many bad parts we produce. Then we'll use a variable called stop time count to keep track of how many times we stop the line or from either a break or a planned downtime. Next, we'll go ahead and use the main variables for OEE, like performance. In this case, we're going to change it to a float 8. Then we'll set a value variable for quality, availability, OEE for total OEE, and then we're going to create a one for OEE array, which we'll use to keep track of OEE for the last 10 calculations. All we need to do now is save this and go ahead and start up all the devices for the global variable device, the Rockwell PLC, and the Siemens PLC. We're going to start that up. DeviceWise will make the connection and automatically populate all the tag information from the Siemens and the Rockwell PLC. As you can see here, I can go ahead and highlight on the Rockwell PLC, read all the data in either in a byte format or in a bit format. And I can also do the same thing for the Siemens PLC as well, as DeviceWise has a common driver interface between all the different environments. And I can see all the OEE variables that we created a moment ago. Now, the next part we need to do is actually create a variable group so we can organize everything together. What a variable group allows you to do is keep track of multiple different data tags across any type of device. In this case, we're going to be keeping track of the planned production time global variable and the stop time global variable, allowing us to easily do one single program to keep do all the calculation for runtime, while also keeping track exactly when these values change instead of just having to pull them all the time to see when they change, we'll know exactly when it happens. The next one we'll do is for variability. 
and this will also be for with plan production time and runtime. Now we're using the global variables, but this could be for any type of device, PLC, CNC, robot, DC torque tool, um, even something like a barcode scanner or anything else, you can integrate that into a variable group. It's just a great way to organize what you need to keep track of. Next one we'll create is for the performance variable group. In this case, we'll keep track of the total count, run time, and idle cycle time. Next up will be quality variable group. So we'll be keeping track of the good count and total count. And the reason you see me select the types here is because we need to keep the different types of tags together. The last variable group we need to create is the OAE variable group itself. This will be containing the variables of availability, performance, and quality. Now these since are float eight types, I need to change that over to a float eight so we can pay attention to the right values. And then now all I need to do is select all the variable groups that we've created, start them, and then we can go ahead and start building our programs. Now, before we start building our programs, we need to create something that's called a project. Now, a project is a way of organizing your triggers or device-wise programs that allows you to keep everything organized be able to turn all of them off at the same time, turn it back on, or keep them just isolated based off projects or needs. The first one we're gonna create is the runtime calculation. So what we're gonna do is give it a name, select variable group, we selected the right variable group, and then we went ahead and put in the value placeholders in the expression action block. That's gonna allow us to do the mathematical calculations. In this case, we put plan production time minus stop time, and then we just need to select the OAE variables correctly, and then we can go ahead and close the program out. But before we do, we map the data back over to where the resulting needs to go. In this case, the global variable runtime. Now I'm gonna do a shortcut here and duplicate what I've already done so I can keep going forward without having to redo every single step. The next one we need to create is the availability calculation. So I'm going to name it as such, open it up, point to the right variable group, and I'm going to modify the expression block. Since production time is already there, I can leave it there and use it later. I just need to get rid of the stop time because I'm not using that anymore and add in runtime from the previous section. We'll be able to pull the values right out of the global variable. On the input tab, I just need to select the correct global variable, in this case, runtime, and specify the output. And for now we're calculating availability, I need to select the availability global variable. Save this, and then duplicate it again to continue on so I don't have to redo every single step. Next part will be creating the performance calculation. I'm gonna open the same thing up again change the variable group to performance, and we're gonna modify the expression again. In this case, we only need runtime, and then we're gonna add in parentheses to keep in the idle cycle time multiplied by the total count, and then divided by runtime. Same thing, we just need to map our input variables now. In this case, it will be for idle cycle time. Total count. And then the output will be going to the global variable performance. Our second to last OE calculation will be for quality. 
and we're going to open it up same as before change the variable group to the quality variable group and go ahead and change the math expression for this we'll need total count still but you see even if i erase everything and put good count in first and then divide it by total count when I go over to the input tab, DeviceWise is smart enough to keep track of that and it kept total count mapped for me. So the only thing I had to do was map in the good count and then point it, the resulting value, over into the quality global variable. And then one more OE calculation. In this case, it will be for the OE calculation formula itself. So you open that up. Now we just need to select the OE variable group open up the expression, go ahead and put in the OE formula. In this case, it'll be availability times performance times quality. And it's going to go ahead and map all those variables to the global variable availability, performance, and quality. Now, I could directly map this into the OEE variable itself. However, what I'm going to do is actually map this to a local variable. A local variable is a place in memory that I can then utilize later on. In this case, I'm going to use it within the trigger, connect up a sub-trigger call that I had built previously. Now, a sub-trigger can be either used as similar to like a subroutine or in this case, I'm going to use it as a predetermined template where I can put information that I use sometimes and then pull it out later on. In this case, it's going to be putting the newest data in and then also doing an array shift so I can keep track of the data inside of the array that we built previously. So what I need to do is provide that. need to map the new data from the local variable we just created. Put say the size of the array is 10 and then the sub trigger will handle everything else for me. Go ahead and save this. So now that we've finished building the OE calculation for us, let's do a little bit of device control. So it's going to create a new program called bad part counter. And it's going to keep track of register I00 on the Siemens PLC. And we're going to set the condition so it's only going to run this program when the register is set to one. This is going to indicate to us that a bad part has come out of the machine and we need to send it down the chute to either waste or rework. What we're doing here then is mapping the input on the Siemens PLC to the output of the Rockwell PLC so that we can tell the Rockwell to open the gate to send the part down to rework or scrap. Next, we're going to do is do a little math formula. We're just going to add one to the existing bad part count so we can keep track of how many bad parts we're producing. I'm going to copy this here quickly so I can use it more easily. And now I'm going to go ahead and add one to the total count so we can keep track of the total count of parts we produce. Finally, we're going to wait one second so that the part can go through the chute to the other side. You could replace this with a some type of laser sensor or presence sensor if you have that. In this case, we don't, so we're just going to use a time. And then after that one second period, we're going to send a value of zero to the Rockwell so we can go ahead and close that gate. I'm going to connect up an end execution success to close the program, save it, and we're good there. And then to make our lives even more easier, we're going to ahead and duplicate the bad part counter just make it good part counter. And then we only need to tweak it very slightly. Instead of looking at register 00, we're going to look at register 01. And then we're going to map register 01 to register DI01 on the Rockwell. This will indicate a good part, so we can put it down the good part chute. We're going to go ahead and also increase the good part count so we can keep track of that. We don't need to change the total count. We don't need to change the weight. All we need to do is change the final register for the Rockwell so we can close the gate appropriately. Now that we have everything built, the last thing to do is go ahead and highlight everything, say start, 
so that all the programs we built will start up ready to go when we have the devices running. Now, one unique thing about DeviceWise, all the visual programs you saw me build are actually compiled at runtime. So you're running a very bare to the metal program, not an interpreted language. What you see I'm doing here is creating a gallery. It's very similar to our projects for triggers where you have an organizational component to your functionality. In this case, I created an, a gallery to hold in our new OEE display. I'm going to select a variable and you see, that's all I really need to do if I just wanted to see the value, but I'm going to add a format onto it for percentage so that the widget knows to format itself as availability in the form of percentage. I gave it a title of availability. And now what I'm going to do is duplicate it and just change it accordingly, the pieces I need and I don't have to do everything. Gave it a new title and went ahead and select the new variable. I'm going to duplicate it one more time select over um, quality in this case, and then I'm going to give it a title of quality. Next, what I'm going to do is put in a widget for good part count so I can keep track of that. Going over to the variables, add the variable in, select the global variable, and there you go. Now, I'm not going to put a format. What I'm actually going to do is go over to the style section and change the background. Now, you can do the background for many different parts. I'm going to use a gradient and I'll show you to select the green. The built-in option is there, but what I'm going to do is actually change the value so it's to match more of a, in my, a more friendly green. And then I'm going to also duplicate this one more time, use this for a bad part count. change the title, and then go back over to the styling and give this a different gradient background. And then I can take the default or I can go ahead and play with the color scheme. Now I'm gonna duplicate this one more time for the total part count. Just select the variable, save it change the title and for good measure I'll change the style so that the background is unique and I want it all in the same row so let me just move it over and you see device wise view automatically scales up for what I tell it I want it to be formatted as the next one I need to do is going to be for planned production time I'm going to put a suffix on this for seconds. And I'm going to put a write widget here because we're going to configure this before we start running the line. I'm going to duplicate this one more time, pull it in. Now I'm going to change it to idle cycle time. Keep the same suffix, but change the title. Again, being able to clone or duplicate what I've already have reduces time. Bring in one more right widget because we're going to also set the ideal cycle time before we get started so we have some base calculations. Next, what I'm going to do is bring in a pie chart so we can go ahead and map the bad count versus good count. You can choose whatever you want to do. Um, this is just the calculation I want to show up is the bad parts versus good parts we produce. Last part I'm going to bring in is a graph widget, and that's where we're going to utilize the array that we talked about earlier. Go ahead and specify that I want to see 10 array cells on this. And I'm going to go also into the Apex settings, change the data labels so I can actually see the values as they're in there. They're currently zeros, but they're not going to be there for much longer. Now I'm going to specify planned production time. In this case, it's going to be one hour in seconds. And I'm going to say the cycle time is going to be 30 seconds. And as you see, I go ahead and flip the switch on my PLC to simulate dropping a good part. And then I'll flip the other one to drop the bad part. You can see the changes. And now I wanna see what happens if I wanna change the theming. So I like dark mode, some people like light mode. So this is how you can change it and change the accent color. But you can not only see it on a desktop environment, if you wanted to move this or automatically link it to a mobile environment, you can do a, something like this, a pre-done QR code. Just save it, you can see how it is. And then you can bring up your mobile phone, 
tablet or any other type of device and either type in the IP address or I can go ahead and scan the QR code. Let's bring up my phone here, bring up the camera, and you can see I'm going to scan the QR code, open it directly in my browser, log in just like I did on the desktop environment, and you can have multi different types of users within DeviceWise for different levels of security. And now I can bring up the same display that you're seeing on my desktop environment on my mobile device. And it will dynamically scale for how I choose to do it. As you can see, when I start flipping the toggle switches on the PLC to indicate good part or bad part, you can see the graph changes, the value changes, the calculations will do everything in real time. And I can see those changes on my desktop and my mobile device exactly. In the same way as a manager can see what's happening on the shop floor and the operator can tell the manager what's happening in real time either when they're in the same facility or halfway around the world. So this is just um, OE demo, quick and dirty, and way below 30 minutes. Thanks. Matthew, that was great. Really impressive demo. I love it. So guys, uh, now that we did this demo, uh, please feel free to send us any uh, questions uh, that you might have. David, I believe that we already have a couple of them here. So let's let's go for questions. All right, so one question we have here is, I already use Kepware in Ignition, but it seems like device-wise may be more powerful. How does the software license work? Uh, thank you so much for the question. Yes, device-wise has a license that is based on number of machines that you connect. So you can start very small. So if you think in terms of a project that will have just a few machines, you can have device-wise, let's say for five connections, that is going to be below $2,000 a license. And then you can have these machines connected with unlimited number of IT systems for you to connect, unlimited logic, unlimited drivers. You can use as many drivers as you want, robots, PLCs, sensors, Tor guns, all the drivers are completely available and without the necessity of paying one single uh, uh, dollar on top of that because it's all included. Uh, and then basically, the more machines you have, you just add additional connections. So it is completely scalable. You can start with one machine, two machines, and run in environments with 5,000, 10,000 machines, as we have, for example, in the large manufacturing uh, players in automotive space, for example. All right, uh, another question that came in says, uh, it seems we can do local data collection and dashboards. Can we also have remote connectivity, such as tunnel for remote access and configurations? Hey, Matthew, do you want to take this question? Sure, Ricardo, I'll be glad to. Of course you can. Um, with DeviceWise, we have full um, layer three uh, access to our systems. You can access the same displays you would see locally, completely remotely, meaning from the back shop or from a thousand miles away at headquarters, the operator and the technician and the manager can see the same screen in real time. Or if you choose to as well, you can use all kinds of different features to transport that data back to a centralized location and share the data accordingly. There's many different ways to use device-wise. And uh, Matthew, that's, uh, that's very interesting because uh, I would like to share here some of interesting use cases that we have. We have customers that they are machine builders. So companies that produce packaging machines, CNCs, plastic injection machines, in general, any type of industrial equipment. Uh, and inside this equipment, typically the customers are putting cellular gateways like 4G, 5G gateways, running device-wise and shipping this to the market with the gateway preloaded with device-wise inside the cabinet. So device-wise can collect all the data native there, push this data to the device-wise cloud, and you and the customers, they transform their business by using device-wise cloud to remotely monitor these machines. And not only they can monitor this, but you can, for example, replace the necessity of an E1, for example, a gateway that will provide you a VPN by using device-wise. So device-wise will also provide you all the VPN functionality for you to remotely access this device, uh, and not only monitor this, but eventually fix things over the air. 
So you can tunnel in to the device, change the logic, for example, in the gateway itself. Or even further, if you need to change functionalities in the controller of your machine, you can even use a layer to tunnel to change the ladder logic of this controller with all the security around. So you have role-based security involved, all the encryption necessary, multiple keys, uh, all the audit auditability and traceability in the system. So this is a very secure environment for you to provide servitization in a completely remotely way. Great. Okay, another question here is, uh, can I integrate this with SQL database and can I use DeviceWise to open tickets in an asset management system like SAP PM or IBM Maximo? Matthew, do you want to take this one? Sure, Ricardo. Uh, short answer is yes. You can integrate into many different types of databases with DeviceWise, including MySQL, Postgres, SQL, Mongo, MS Access. And then furthermore, you can also natively integrate with into systems like SAP. Um, we integrate directly into the SAP BAPI system, or you can communicate over a WebSocket connection. And we I have a direct connection also with SAP MII, or we're one of two companies in the world that has a native interface to SAP Pico. So regardless of what you're interested in databases or any type of management system, DeviceWise has the connection for it. All right, we have a question about DeviceWise View, and they're asking, can it be used to replace an HMI in front of machines? Absolutely, David. Uh, the answer is yes. And we have many customers using the Vicewise View for this. So instead of buying the old type of HMI systems, customers they can run the Vicewise and use any type of screen, such a tablet, a ruggedized tablet, or even computers in front of these machines. And the Vicewise View, as I explained at the beginning, can be used in two different ways. You can use this as a dashboard for you to understand what is happening in the process, but you also can use this literally as an HMI. So you can visualize things, you can add commands there, you can add buttons, text boxes, and more. So you provide to the operator the ability of interfacing with this machine. You can make device-wise to control the machine, so you can turn on, turn off the machine, change the P-set of this machine, uh, add additional input to the process. I like a lot this type of use case when customers, they put tablets or use even phones. So operators can not only know what's going on, but enrich the data set that you have. So for example, let's say that you're doing OE and you are monitoring downtime and uptime. If you have a downtime, many times the controller itself, the PLC, can give you the reason why this machine is down hey, I have a jam machine here, so somebody needs to do something. The Viceroy's can trigger an action based on this native data coming from the controllers. But in certain cases, the downtime is caused by different things. Let's say that the operator simply needs a bio break. So now the operator can not only stop the machine, but he can also ingest more data in terms of why this machine is down. So managers, they can understand the root cause of the downtime and act in terms of improving the performance of the whole process. So the answer is yes, device-wise completely replaces any type of HMI and SCADA system. Oh, that's great. Okay, we have a pricing question. Do I need to pay extra for drivers? And what about tags? What are the limitations? Absolutely unlimited. All the drivers are completely available for you. From the most common Siemens S7 driver, to the most sophisticated and unique drivers. I don't know, the Nachi robots, the Torque tools, uh, anything that you can imagine, CNC. The list of drivers is huge. If you go to our uh, documentation, if you go to docs.devicewise.com, you can go through the endless types of devices that we can connect with DeviceWise and all the drivers are completely available. We know that there are many platforms that they get, they have some gotchas there, and the more you use, the more they try to, to charge you for adding, for example, charges for the number of tags. This is not how our price policy works. So unlimited uh, tags is also included there. Uh, if you use five tags or 500,000 tags, 
the Viceroy's can handle all of them and you will not need to pay anything extra for that, as well as you don't pay extra for logic, you don't pay extra for IT connectors. All these functionalities are completely available at no extra cost. Okay, Ricardo, Matthew, we have time for one last question, and it's from a system integrator. They asked if Telet has a partnership program that would allow them to be a reseller. Uh, great question. Uh, absolutely. Telet is a technology provider, and the way that we go to market is in partnership with system integrators and uh, resellers, distributors. We have a very aggressive SI program that we provide an aggressive price for system integrators so they can integrate this to their offer and take this to the market. Not only we have this commercial incentive on the pricing level, but we have also all our education program. We have something that we call Device Wise University. Device Wise University is a full training uh, program that we have. So we provide this education for customers and integrators so they can become experts in IoT and they can create all these applications by themselves. Uh, this is a program that typically takes between three to five days. This can happen uh, on a completely remote online way. Uh, and you have all the education that you need to create any type of application. All right, David, thank you so much. I would like to thank IoT Central for the opportunity to be here. I wish you like it. And if you have any further questions, please send us a message and we will be very happy to reply all the questions that you made that were not answered yet. Thank you so much.